Why do we consecrate something to the Lord? We consecrate something to God in order to make it holy. Consecration literally means to be set apart for a holy purpose or to make holy. So something that's secular, something that's profane, is given to God and is made holy, is changed. And so that's why we consecrate. That's why religious consecrate themselves to God in order for God to change them. And so when the angel Gabriel came to Mary, the Holy Spirit came upon the Blessed Virgin Mary. She was consecrated to the Lord. And when the Holy Spirit united with Mary, Jesus, the second person of the, of the Holy Trinity, came down into her womb and assumed flesh, what we call the hypostatic union. So for Jesus to be born into a soul, how was Jesus born the first time? Through Mary and the Holy Spirit. How was Jesus born the second time in souls through Mary and the Holy Spirit. That's why we consecrate souls. That's why we consecrate nations to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Because we're entrusting them to Mary in order for Jesus to be born again through Mary in that nation or in that soul's life to transform them. So you have to understand the importance of consecration, of why did Mary come to Fatima ask for consecration because she knew that if certain nations were not consecrated that they would go the opposite way of atheism of persecution of the church which we saw but if nations are consecrated then God's grace is unleashed upon that nation for that nation's conversion. Now, we need to make a distinction here between consecration and conversion. Because a lot of people get that mixed up. They think as soon as someone is consecrated or a nation is consecrated, they're converted. No. As soon as a nation is consecrated, then they're on the road to conversion, but it doesn't mean conversion will happen right away. So think of just one individual. If they're consecrated, it takes a whole lifetime to convert. Think about that for a whole nation, especially a whole nation that, would, that their, their whole philosophy was atheism. It was an atheistic mentality. It's going to take time. So it takes time for conversion to happen after consecration. But consecration does unleash the graces upon that nation for conversion. So there, there's been many consecrations of the world to the Immaculate Heart of Mary in Russia. The, the first one who did was Pope Pius XII in 1942. And, but he did not do it in union with all the bishops of the world. When Pius XII consecrated the world and Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, Sister Lucia received an interlocution from Jesus saying that he, because of that consecration that Pius XII did, he was going to shorten World War II. That was in 1942. The war still lasted another three more years. But it still unleashed the graces to even shorten the war. The war probably would have been longer. World War II might have been longer had Pius XII not done it. And then there were subsequent popes that consecrated the world to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. But each time, Sister Lucia said, no, this did not fulfill Our Lady's request because it has to be in union to all the bishops of the world. And the Blessed Mother promised that if Russia was consecrated to her Immaculate Heart, she would save Russia, that God would save Russia by, by that means. So there was a special consecration on March 25th, 19. 84, that Pope John Paul II did. Now, Pope John Paul II was from Poland. He, he knew communism firsthand. He had lived under it. He, he knew the persecution of the church. And especially when he was shot in 1981, that inspired him even more to want to consecrate the world to the Immaculate Heart 
of Mary, and specifically Russia. And so on March 25th, 1984, Pope John Paul II, three months before he did the consecration, sent out letters to all the bishops of the world asking to join him in the consecration of the world to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Now, when we say the world, that includes Russia. Russia is part of the world, as is the United States, as is other countries, including what was called the, the Eastern Bloc of the Soviet Union under the Iron Curtain. Those nations were also consecrated to the Immaculate heart of Mary. Now, a lot of people argue and say, well, the Pope didn't do it explicitly. He did not mention Russia explicitly. What Sister Lucia said is she said she was given the message for the church to consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, but she was not given how to do it. The how to do it is up to the church. So that was up to Pope John Paul II of how to do the exact consecration. And in the consecration that Pope John Paul II did, when he did the consecration, he paused for a moment. So he had a text that he did, consecrating the world to the Immaculate Heart of Mary, but he paused for a moment. And you could see him praying. And we believe at that moment, he implicitly consecrated Russia to the Immaculate heart of Mary at that moment. Again, God did not say how to do the consecration. It's up to the church how to do the consecration. Pope John Paul II knew that if he had mentioned Russia explicitly, that it probably would have been bad for the countries in Eastern Europe. Even Bishop Alberto Cosme de Omera of Lira Fatima told Father Robert Fox, the editor of Fatima Family Messenger on July 10, 1989. This is the quote. During the actual consecration by Pope John Paul II, there were a few moments of pausing during which it was not clear what the Holy Father said. And then he says, I thank the Pope later for consecrating the world to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And the Pope added, and Russia. Pope John Paul II said, and Russia. So it was his intention also to consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And after this consecration, Sister Lucia was visited by the Apostolic Nuncio, who asked her, is Russia now consecrated? And she answered, yes, now it is. The Nuncio then said, now we wait for the miracle. And she answered, God will keep his word. And then three months later, Sister Lucia wrote three letters to a magazine stating that the consecration that Pope John Paul II did in union with all the bishops of the world did fulfill Our Lady of Fatima's request to consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Again, we have to distinguish between consecration and conversion. Distinguish that. Consecration and conversion. So, and a lot of people will say, well, no, Russia was never consecrated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. You'll see that, hear that all around. Russia was consecrated to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Because I'm going to read to you events, historical facts and events that happened after the consecration of Russia, the USSR, to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And you have to understand what people in Eastern Europe were going through and people in Russia were going through from 1917, from the Communist Revolution, all the way up to this point of 1984, there was threat of nuclear war in the world. It was very dangerous. The church was under persecution. Many had died. Many were starved in Ukraine. They were starved in the 1930s. So it was, it was, it was just absolutely, people were under this iron grip. 
And listen to what happened afterwards. So March 25th, 1984, Pope John Paul II consecrates the world to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Shortly after that, May 13th, 1984, one of the largest crowds in Fatima history gathers at the shrine to pray the rosary for peace. On the same day, May 13th, 1984, and that's the feast of Our Lady of Fatima, that's when she first appeared. Something happens in Russia. An explosion at the Soviet Severomorovsk naval base destroys two-thirds of all the missiles stockpiled for the Soviet's northern fleet. The blast also destroyed workshops needed to maintain the missiles, as well as hundreds of scientists and technicians. Western military experts called it the worst naval disaster the Soviet Navy has suffered since World War II. Then after that same year, December 13, 1984, an explosion in Siberia destroys Russia's largest ammunition base. December 19, 1984, Soviet Defense Minister Marshal Ustinov, mastermind of the invasion plans for Western Europe, suddenly and mysteriously dies. December 22, 1984, three days later, December 22, Marshal Sotolov, the second minister of defense, dies. March 10, 1985, Soviet Chairman Kostinon Chermenko dies. March 11, 1985, Soviet Chairman Mikhail Gorbachev is elected. And his, the first thing that he does is he institutes perestroika and glasnost, which is bringing in democracy and openness. And so things begin to open up in Russia. Churches begin to open up. People are allowed to worship. Things begin to happen. April 26, 1986, Chernobyl nuclear reactor accident. A little known fact is that Chernobyl in Ukrainian is translated as worm wood. In the book of Revelation, chapter 8, 10 through 11, it says, The third angel sounded his trumpet, and a great star blazing like a torch fell from the sky on a third of the rivers and on the, thir- and on the springs of water. The name of the star is wormwood. A third of the waters turned bitter, and many people died from the waters that had become bitter. May 12, 1988, on the Fatima Vigil, an explosion wrecked the only factory that made the rocket mortars for the Soviets' deadly SS-24 long-range missiles, which carry 10 nuclear bombs each. August 29, 1989, Sister Lucia affirms that the consecration has been accomplished and that God will keep his word and work this miracle. November 9th, 1989, the fall of the Berlin Wall. November to December 1989, there's peaceful revolutions in Czechoslovakia, Romania, Bulgaria, and Albania. Poland has, uh, has open elections. 1990, East and West Germany are unified. August 19, 1991, 74th anniversary of Our Lady's fourth apparition at Fatima. The communist coup attempts the overthrow of Gorbachev, who contributed largely to the dismantling of the Soviet Empire. August 22, 1991, the feast of the Queenship of Mary, the attempt of the communist coup to return to hard communism is defeated without a single gunshot fired, without any violence, no bloodshed. The amazing thing about this, August 22, 1991, before Vatican II, this was the feast of the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So you had the feast of the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the Queenship of Mary where this coup of communism is defeated. Then shortly after that, in September, the Baltic stakes gained their independence. That's Latvia, Estonia, and Lithuania. October 12th and 13th, 1991, the first Russian pilgrimage to Fatima, Archbishop Tadeusz Kondrushev's 
Roman Catholic Archbishop from Moscow leads the first Russian pilgrimage group to Fatima. It is televised in Russia on 150 stations and 350 radio stations. Father Robert Fox, director of Fatima Family Apostolate, is asked to be present in Fatima with the Russian group. December 1991, Gorbachev meets with the Pope and the Vatican a second time. Diplomatic relations were open between the Vatican and Russia, and Latin Rite churches were opened in Russia. December 8, 1991, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. There begins the Commonwealth of Republics, the end of the USSR. Twelve days later, Boris Yeltsin of Russia met the, with the Pope at the Vatican. And listen to these dates. These are all specific feast days in the church connected with Mary, that all this is happening. Then finally, on December 25th, 1991, guess what December 25th is? Christmas. Christmas Day. The dissolution of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. The communist flag is taken down for the last time over the Kremlin in Moscow, and the Russian flag is raised. Gorbachev resigns and sends a letter to Pope John Paul II. Fifteen republics were freed from communism. On December 30, 1991, Sister Lucia is reported saying that the defeat of communism was through Mary's intercession. This is why historical events show that the consecration of Russia, of the world, and implicitly of Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary on March 25, 1984, had dramatic fruits, had a miracle. Not hardly a single shot was fired. The revolutions were not bloody. It was, it was just a miracle. Analysts to this day, political analysts, cannot believe it. And you see all the different dates that it happened, happened with dates that were associated with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with her feast days, with her solemnities. And in just seven years, from 1984 to Christmas Day 1991, a great miracle happened. Great miracle. Un unbelievable. Never seen before. And that's what consecration can do. Can work a great miracle that we think is impossible. Now, why ha have the popes maybe consecrated the world to the Immaculate Heart of Mary afterwards? Because the world needs it. Because the world needs conversion. Why is Pope Francis consecrating Russia and Ukraine to the Immaculate Heart of Mary? Because both countries need it right now. They're at war. So they need that consecration, especially Russia, for conversion. This doesn't mean that, that all of Russia is bad. There's good people in Russia. Certainly after the fall of communism, a lot of the churches opened up. And as I said, the body of Russia changed. But the heart of Russia still has remained the same. It's the heart of Russia that needs conversion. And only through the Immaculate Heart of Mary will the heart of Russia be converted. Why is Russia so important? I, I like what, po what Ful Bishop Fulton J. Sheen said. He, he used to preach all the time in the 50s and 60s about Russia and communism. He said that Russia has fire. Russia has zeal. And if Russia is converted, Russia will convert the world. If Russia is converted, Russia will convert the world. Russia has been consecrated, needs to be re-consecrated. But if Russia is converted from the heart, not from the body, but from the heart, Russia will be instrumental in the conversion of the world. 
So we're at a historical moment today on this March 25th, 2022, in which the Holy Father will not implicitly, but explicitly consecrate Russia and also Ukraine to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. We pray that this consecration will bring a miracle like it did after the March 25th, 1984 miracle, that it will bring conversion, not only of Russia or the Ukraine, but of the entire world, of each person in the world, each nation in the world, will be converted to the Immaculate Heart of Mary in order to bring about the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary.